mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem. Let's start with this table. This is a differentiable function, and that's important because if it's differentiable, it's definitely continuous. Um, that means there's no holes, no asymptotes. But being differentiable means we also do not have any sharp turns. Um, nothing weird at all happening. So let's plot the points we're given. Um, so we have 0, 1, it's right here. Um, 2 goes to 5, 4 goes to 8, 6, 10, 8, 11, 10, 10, 12, 8, 14, 5, and 16, 1. Oh, this looks like a parabola, doesn't it? So it's going to plot and connect the dots. I can do that. Connect the dots, blah, blah, blah. Like our picture pages. Now, in calculus, the derivative has many interpretations. Um, remember, it's the rate of change. We're finding slope. Um, so let's talk about rate of change and the difference between average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Now, your average rate of change is really um, the slope between two points. So if we think about the average rate of change, I would be taking the y difference in my y values over the difference in my x's. That's over some interval a to b. Now remember, this is this that's really just finding slope of the secant line, isn't it? The instantaneous rate of change at one point means we're only using one point. So that means that we're not using the slope of the secant line. This has got to be the slope of the tangent line. How do we find the slope of a tangent line? Well, yeah, that's just the derivative evaluated at some singular point, at a point. So for this one, it's two points. For this one, it's just one. Find the average rate of change of f of x over the interval 2 to 12. So that means f of 12 minus f of 2 over 12 minus 2. We're just finding slope. F of 12 from my table is 8. F of 2 is 5. 12 minus that's 10. So the average rate of change, be lazy, is 3 tenths. Instantaneous rate of change be the slope of the tangent line at 4. This has, is the instantaneous rate of change at 4 greater than the rate of change at 6. So we're going to be comparing the slope of the line at 4 and the slope of the line at 6. So let's make sure we understand what we're doing there. On the first one, the average rate of change from 2 to 12, that's really finding the slope between these two points. Average rate of change. equals the slope of the secant line. It's going through two points, secant line. Now, instantaneous rate of change at 4. Well, let's see. At 4, we're here. So the slope of that line is like at the tangent line is about here. And at 6, Notice it's lessening off a little bit, and we're going to be zero when we get to the top. So I would say, yes, the rate of change is greater 
at x equals 4, then at x equals 6, so I can state my answer, because the tangent line at x equals 4 has a greater slope. Now, we're going to be dealing a lot with the average rate and instantaneous rate and talking about the slopes of a graph. And we're going to be using two theorems. Rolle's theorem is the first one. So let me write out Rolle's theorem and then we'll, we'll analyze it a little bit. Rolle's theorem says if f of x is continuous, between two points and it's differentiable between those two points and if f of a equals f of b then something interesting happens so f of a has to equal f of b remember f of a, that's the y value with a, and then the y value at b. So we're going to have a picture kind of like, we're going to have one here and one here. So the y values are the same. It says, if I know that is true, there is at least one value, c, on that interval can't be one of the endpoints. Where f prime of c equals zero. So they're saying somehow I've got a continuous nice pretty function. If I connect the dots here, somehow I'm gonna have a derivative of zero. Well, one way is to go straight across. Well that's a horizontal line, it's derivative is zero because it's slope of zero. Um, what if I just go up and come down? Oh, I'd have a maximum. If I went down and came back up, yeah, I'd have a maximum. I could even go up and then back down and then here. Oh, yeah, that, that one, there's, there's two points. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So, first we have to think about is the graph continuous, differentiable? And then we have to figure out if the y values are the same. To use Rolle's theorem. So if we think about the last problem, we know it was differentiable, it told us. So we're good there. So we have to check f of 2, which if I look at that table, it's a 5. And then f of 14, it's also a 5. So Rolle's theorem applies. Because, was it continuous and differentiable? Yes, because f of x is continuous and differentiable on that set of numbers and f of 2 equals f of 14. Actually, this should be parentheses. What about 2 to 8? First, check the endpoint. f of 2 is 5. f of 8 is 11. Well, nope. I don't even need to worry about anything else. Roll theorem doesn't apply. f of 2 does not equal f of 8. The so next one, figure out whether Rolle's theorem applies, then apply the theorem to find the values 
of C that make it work. So, okay, on number one, we have 9x squared minus x to the fourth. That's a polynomial. G of x is continuous. And differentiable. A lot of times it's nice just to go ahead and write that in your answer once you know that it's true so that you can always use any of these theorems once you've written that. Now I need to check my endpoint. G of negative 3. 9 of negative 3 squared minus negative 3 to the fourth is 0. G of 0. Well, that's zero. It's easy. So, um, yes, roll theorem applies. Oops, not applies. Applies. I know this spell. So, there is some value C where g prime is going to equal 0. So g prime of x equals 0. And we want to find out where that is. So g prime is 18x minus 4x cubed. I want to know when that equals 0. So let's see. There's a 2x in there. That'll leave me 9 minus 2x squared. Set each factor equal to zero. Wait, that's not between negative three and zero, so that's not a good option. Nine minus two x squared. Okay, that'd be nine halves. X equals plus or minus square root of nine is three over the square root of two. Oh wait between negative 3 and 0. So there's only one answer. Now remember we're looking for C. It has to be between those two. So the negative 3 over square root of 2 is the only option that works. Okay, number 2. Sine of x over x plus 2 on the interval negative 4 ne to negative 1. I hope you notice something right away. Anytime you have division, you have the chance to have an asymptote or a hole. Where's the asymptote or hole going to happen at? Well, there's an asymptote at negative 2. Rolle's theorem is not applicable or does not apply. Because g of x is not continuous at x equals negative 2. And that's between negative 4 and negative 1. So there's no reason to do anything else. Now, the next theorem is really similar to this. I mean, really similar. They're actually related. They're actually partners. Um, that one said, you know, if you had the two points, then you're going to, like, yeah, that, that you're going to have a, you know, to turn around somewhere. Mean value theorem says if f of x is continuous, on A to B and differentiable. On A to B. Then there exists. See, I told you it was similar. At least one value. Very similar. x equals c on that interval such that it's 
the derivative at C is equal to the slope of the second line. So if I have a graph, I have two points here and here. This is saying that the slope of this secant line, I can find at least one other point whose tangent line has the same slope. Oh, what about, where can you find one? Well, what about here? Is that the same slope? Yep, what about here? Same slope. Parallel lines. Parallel slopes. The slope of the tangent equals the slope of the secant. So we have a function, 3 minus 5 over x. Does MVT apply on the interval negative 1 to 5? Division, bad number, 0. MVT does not apply. Because h of x is not continuous at x equals 0. What about from 1 to 5? Yes, mvt does apply. h of x is continuous and differentiable. Graphically, what does NVT guarantee for the function on the interval 1 to 5? 1 to 5. It's saying there is a point, a value from 1 to 5, whose instantaneous slope slope of the ta ta tangent line is the same as the slope between those two points. So between 1, negative 2 and 5, 2. Oops. Hmm. Forgot how to write point all of a sudden. Do you think there's a place? Well, it looks like it's about here. But how can we find that exact value? Well, do we happen to know the slope between these two points? Yeah. So there's going to be, we need to find the slope between those two points. Let's just do that. h of 5 minus h of 1 over 2 minus negative 1 h of 5 is 2, that's a negative 1. Oh, what did I do here? I think I wrote down the, the y value. Oh my gosh, that was 5 minus 1 there. So I end up with 4 over 4, which is 1. So I want to know, when does the derivative equal that slope? When are they the same? So, h of x was 3 minus 5 over x. That's 3 minus 5 times x to the negative 1. h prime is 
gone. Negative 5 times negative 1 is a positive 5. x to the subtract 1, that's a negative 2. Or 5 over x squared. I want to know when that equals 1. Well, that's x squared equals 5. x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Well, minus square root of 5 would be over there. Square root of 5 is bigger than 2, so it's in that interval. So our value c has to be the positive square root of 5. Explain why you cannot apply mean value theorem for f of x equals x to the two-thirds minus two. Okay, so let's think about that. Why can't we? Well, that's continuous. Let's see. Look at the derivative. That's going to be two-thirds x to the negative one-third. Wait a minute. That's 2 over 3 cube root of x. I'm undefined there. Since f prime of 0 is undefined, f of x is not differentiable over that whole interval. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph f of x equals 2x plus sine x plus 1 on the interval 0 to pi at the point which is guaranteed by the mean value theorem. First off, um, that's a polynomial. That's a trig function, a sine curve. So this is definitely continuous. Indifferentiable. So, okay, so I need to find f prime. It's going to be 2, and then sine is going to give me cosine. I also need to find out um, that, that slope. Um, so I remember, I'm going to be figuring out when my derivative equals f of pi minus f of 0 over pi minus 0. Got that from here. So um, when you plug in pi to pi plus sine of pi, Remember, at pi, sine is 0, so this is going to be 2 pi plus 1. Minus, it's going to be 0 and a 0, 1 over pi. That's going to be 0, 2 pi divided by pi is just going to give me a 2. Okay, so I've got 2 plus cosine x equals 2. Well, that's when cosine x equals 0. Oh, that's pi over 2. So, we need to find the equation of the tangent line.
I need to find my point of tangency and I need to find the slope. Well, I know the slope. Suppose we do. But the point of tangency, I need to find the y value that goes with that. So f of pi over 2, 2 pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2 plus 1. Well, that's pi, that's 1, that's 1. So pi plus 2. And my derivative, well, if I did my math correctly over here, is supposed to be 2. Because it's equal to the derivative of the secant line. So y minus the y value equals the slope times x minus the x value. 